All right, what is up, fellow adventurers? Just uh, wanted to share a quick build for people that are looking to get into the raiding scene. And uh, one good way in is probably just a healer. A lot of people won't play their main tune as a healer. And that's fair enough. It can be boring. But at the same time, how often do you see a uh, raid that's looking for a healer? So here's how to build a basic one, get you into some raids, and uh, get some runes and threads for your main tune. So I've got a 17-3 favorite soul paladin. 17 favorite soul because they get wings at level 17 and three paladin because it gets some uh, sacred defense enhancements and uh, charisma to saves and stuff it's pretty strong um, for this build I've maxed con uh, and put all level ups into con and my secondary stat is charisma now this tune doesn't have too many past lives and as you can see it doesn't have too many tomes so it doesn't have to be the best tune to be jumping into raids and healing but you do want to be as stout as possible so maximum your con is handy. Um, the feats we've taken here, in order of just whatever, is uh, meta magics, empower healing, enlarge and quicken. Now I haven't taken maximize or empower because they do not work with healing spells from last time I checked. Empower healing, obvious, it empowers your healing spells. Enlarge so you can heal idiots from further away and quicken so you don't get interrupted if you are taking damage. All right. Now, I've got skill focus intimidate here because I wanted to max my intimidate to uh, help if ever needed. Uh, but if you are doing this build and you don't feel confident getting intimidate, you can just get more toughness feats if you want. I figure that's pretty handy. Uh, I guess I should mention that I've gone Asimar for some of the good enhancements in their tree and whatever. Uh, some extra HP and stuff. Um, no martial feats, obviously, because nothing in there will help us. I've gone in the favored soul granted feats, the uh, stout of heart for an extra 10 HP per level or whatever it is. Uh, it makes us just tankier again. The more HP, the merrier. Um, Deity, I've gone for the unyielder, you know, sovereign host, for the unyielding sovereignty. If you know, you're know you in a raid and your tank goes down and you raise him, then you can clear his uh, death penalties and stuff. Or if you just want to give someone a big heal, that's good to use once every raid or so. Uh, defensive feats, I've got shield deflection here uh, because sometimes I just find myself blocking and it uh, gives you a chance to ignore some elemental damage. Not necessarily like make or break for the build, but uh, I think it comes in handy. I've only taken two toughness feats. You may end up taking like five or five plus, so up to you if you want to drop all the intimidate bonuses. Um, I've also taken shield mastery and improved shield mastery, more or less because I don't really know what I'm doing because I'm a pug coming to raids, right? Um, I liked that it gave some PRR, which is your physical resistance rating, which reduces physical damage. Um, also, like I said, very few past lives, bit of a noob here. Um, and for the epic feats, I've got epic toughness because as we leveled con, more HP is good. I took epic re reputation for my intimidate. You don't need to do this, you can just take something else if you don't want the intimidate. Uh, I took epic damage reduction, plus 10 PRR. I like to get a bit of PRR if I can, if something else... Uh, Seems better to you. Go ahead and take it. Uh, the legendary feat at level 30. I took Sign of Celestia. This one's pretty important because it gives you some HP, gives you some more positive spell power, and some uh, crit chance for your positive spells, which are uh, all just gravy. I can't think of a better feat for this kind of build if you are a healer. I have epic spell power positive. This is a pretty shit feat in reality, but, you know, I just want to get a little bit more spell power. If you find something better for your build as you're leveling up, go ahead and take it. I've also got Deific Warding here, which gives some more PRR and MRR, which I find to be... Pretty handy. Uh, the spells, just all healing pretty much. Heals and buffs. It's that easy. All right, moving on to the most important, well, second most important part, I guess, is gear. So, if you are just getting into raiding in the end game scene, you might not have all the gear that I have. So, that's understandable. I think a good way to start is just try and get some of this new Feywild winter gear. Uh, if not, you can work towards getting some green steel bits and pieces and some other uh, raid artifacts or... Just whatever fits into your build trying to maximize your con and your charisma. So I've got the uh, legendary Guardian of the Gates set from Shan here, which is three pieces. But uh, all it really gives me is uh, some elemental absorption and MRR and PRR. I like that, but I also had this gear prior to Feywild coming out. So maybe you don't have that. You can probably just get rid of all that kind of stuff and uh, maybe get yourself um, some of the Feywild stuff. So the Feywild set bonus is pretty good. And uh, as this equips, we will talk about it more. Um, what it gives you when you have six pieces is a uh, plus four artifact, artifact bonus to con. And if you have four pieces, it's 20% uh, 
legendary bonus to your HP. Which uh, I get my 20% bonus from a two piece of legendary green still. I understand a lot of people don't have that, so it is a lot easier to get the uh, winter set. Uh, so let's see, have a look what it looks like when we have just all winter gear on. Six pieces, and it gets us up to 3,352 HP there, as you can see. And then we put on our Ascendant Bond Protector Stance, maybe, and Sacred Defense, and Vigor of Battle. Gets up to over 4k HP from having that bonus to our con, like I was saying, and uh, the bonus to your HP. Pretty handy, pretty easy to get. And then it leaves a few other slots just to get some charisma and con items in, wherever you can fit them. And uh, moving into the next thing, as you can see, I don't even have my destinies capped out because I just made this turn to heal raids for my guild now and then. Um, you want to run in, preferably, Unyielding Sentinel because it gives HP, makes you pretty stout and comes with Renew. Um, I've just taken Con, some shield bonus stuff because I have a shield and I like things that give PRR or Deflection and HP here. And uh, especially Renew, this is one of the big things you really want out of this tree because you can't use Renew if you are not in this tree. A couple of twists here. I got Meld, which is if you're having a bit of a, a tricky situation, lots of mobs attacking you, hit your Meld and you are gravy for 15 seconds pretty much. Um, these twists are not ideal. Uh, healing power is cool, but people say you should probably use stuff like Empyrean Magic, which gives you a bonus to your uh, universal spell power and crit chance, which is pretty handy. Um, also, I've just got Con to round up my Con and Energy Sheath Fire for probably doing some raids. But these are basically all up to you. You can just get all con or whatever other twists you like. And uh, you should be good to go. Now, further from the gear, as I said, you want to just get your con items up and uh, some weapons. I use the uh, Morning Lord Scepter, which is old. comes from Barovia. Uh, the Shan, not the, Shan, the, uh, you know, the pack with the vampire and stuff. Cool, cool. Um, it gives me some potency and uh, spell sight. Not the spell sight affects your healing damage, but the potency does make your heal stronger so that's why i have that it might not be the best item in slot at all there's probably plenty of other items you can choose to get so let's see what works for you but uh this one's just easy to get so i've got it as you can see i was being a bit lazy but i've also got a winter shield but if you don't have a winter shield there's some good shields in shan and just uh wherever you can get your hands on for a shield until you get something really good and uh that's basically it for gear build but let's have a look at enhancements as well. So for enhancements here, most important one is your Beacon of Hope, okay? In Beacon of Hope, you get your beacons, which are big AOE cheap heals. Go all the way up this tree, getting whatever you think is good, and get your Healing Wall, which is pretty cool, and your Heal Spell SLA, which is, uh, well, I think it's one of the best enhancements uh, for a healer. On top of that, I've got some enhancements in Sacred Defender, just to make myself a bit bulkier, you know, some HP, some con here, a uh, competence bonus to our HP. And over in Falconry here, you don't need to take this. The reason I've taken it is because I like to run fast from Sprint Boost and give myself some quality HP, a bit of heal amp, a bit of physical resistance, and this stuff is pretty fun too. Over here in the Asima Racial Tree, I've gotten spent enough points to get up here to the Bond of the Protector for more HP. Again, because we love HP on this build. And also, I've got Tower Shield Proficiency, so I can use Tower Shields. That's about all you need. Just make your healing power strong and make yourself have some HP, and you should be good to go. Now, on top of that, it's important to get your positive spell power up. Mine's only 740. I know a lot of people that run heals get it over 1,000, but uh, 740, around 700, I get the job done. But uh, also, I'm lucky to run in a guild. It might be harder in pugs. So, when you are running in uh, raids and whatever, you want to have a nice rotation of uh, spells to use and uh, enhancements. So what I've done here is I've got Renewal set to my number one key, right? So you keep that on like your tank or anyone that takes damage, you just jump and press one or click on the person that's taking damage and hit them with a Renew. Short cooldown, quite cheap, it's a good heal. If someone takes a big amount of damage, you can hit them with your SLA heal or if the group takes damage, you've got your Beacon of Grace for a small AoE heal and your Beacon of Hope for a large AoE heal which also fixes stat damage and stuff. Uh, if someone takes a lot of damage and someone else takes damage, you can, you've can got two heals here to rotate through and also your healing wall. If still that's not enough, just throw your masses on top of the party. And if that is still not enough, you're probably going to wipe 
the uh, quest or raid that you are doing. So it's easy enough, just rotate through, using Renew, Heal, Beacons, blah blah blah, buff yourself, awesome. You got these hope for protection, success, and victory. They're just small little buffs you can put on your, on your tank or your DPS to make their life a bit easier, make them a bit stronger, help you, help them. Awesome, teamwork in the game. And uh, look guys, that is basically it. If you have any questions, like let me know. You can complain in the DDO Discord. That helps as well. And uh, just a shout out to the easily distracted gaming community on Solona for uh, all the opportunities for pugs to join raids like me and get us some raid loot. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching and I hope this build helps you. Take it easy.